Welcome! Hungary participated in two campaigns in the East. I have already talked about Rapid Corps and Second Army. The Royal Hungarian Air Force also sent smaller contingents to the front, so they deserve their own videos. There's a lot to cover, so let's begin. In April 1941, before the Yugoslav campaign, the Air Force consisted of two fighter and two bomber regiments, a large, short-range reconnaissance regiment, a small, long-range recon group, and a transport squadron. On paper, there were 96 fighters, 120 bombers, 88 short-range and 24 long-range reconnaissance planes, along with six transports that were used by the paratroopers. The fighter wing was transitioning from the Fiat CR-32 to the newer CR-42, the bomber force was switching from the JU-86 to the Caproni CA-135, while the reconnaissance regiment had replaced most of its old Heinkel H-46 planes with the WM-21, which was still a biplane. The long-range group was still using the HE-170, while the transport squadron relied on the Savoia Marchetti SM-75. Morale was high, the Air Force was considered an elite unit, but serviceability was low due to the aging equipment. For the invasion of Yugoslavia, a field brigade was set up, with both fighter regiments, one half of a bomber regiment, and a long-range recon group. Even before Hungary joined the campaign, several Yugoslav bombers were shot down, but in the end no serious opposition was found, Hungary lost four fighters and one recon plane, along with one transport. The latter crashed during takeoff, killing the pilot and 23 paratroopers, including the founder and commander of the battalion. Despite this loss, the remaining 60 paras insisted on the next mission. They were then dropped near Saint Tomas, missing their intended target, and captured the bridge together with the infantry. Cooperation with ground units was not the best. Some troops were bombed by their own planes. In early June, the two bomber regiments were merged, as there were not enough serviceable planes, while there were too many fighters, although half of those were old CR-32s that were supposedly relegated to a training probe. For Operation Barbarossa, a new field brigade was created, with one fighter and one bomber regiment, along with two short-range and the two long-range squadrons. The CR-32s performed well against the faster I-16 fighters, Hungarian pilots used the Italian type's superior maneuverability to down their Soviet opponents. The CA-135 bombers supported the ground forces. The short-range recon squadrons performed courier, reconnaissance and strafing missions, while the long-range group did its best to detect Soviet troop movements, but the limited range of the Heinkel 170 posed issues. One plane was lost to fuel shortage, Another was shot down by Soviet fighters, so this type was soon removed from the roster. Only a few fighters were lost in combat. One pilot rammed his Soviet opponent, but more crashed over the Carpathian Mountains, where adverse weather conditions made such flights very dangerous. After three weeks, the CR-32s were also withdrawn. Their place was taken over by the CR-42 fighters, they were now able to move to new airfields in Galicia, along with the Ju-86 and CA-135 bombers. The CR-42s claimed seven kills over the Zaporozhye bridgehead in early August, when the brand new Regiane RE-2000 Heia fighters also arrived. These were tested in combat for the first time, with mixed results. The CA-135s bombed the bridge at Nikolaev, their escorts claimed another seven kills with a single loss. In October, the Heia fighters returned to Hungary. The rest of the brigade also returned a month later, after flying almost 1,500 sorties, in which 39 enemy planes were shot down and 59 crafts were lost, mostly in accidents. 217 tons of bombs were dropped, but it was obvious that the available types were not suited for modern warfare. Another conclusion was that each squadron should have 12 operational planes instead of the original 9. In the next few months, 
No Hungarian planes flew on the Eastern Front. When 2nd Army was mobilized in early 1942, a new air unit was also included, although this was not part of the agreement with the Germans. This new field brigade included one fighter, one bomber, and one reconnaissance group, each with two squadrons. The first planes arrived at the front in June. These were two Heinkel HE-111s and one ex-Yugoslav Dornier DO-17. Five more Heinkel 111s and three Dornier 215s were received from the Luftwaffe, while the short-range reconnaissance squadron still had 12 HE-46 biplanes, the bomber squadrons had 11 Caproni 135s, and the fighter group had 22 Heyas. Several of these aircraft had to be left behind for repairs, a few were lost on landing. The old Ju-86 bombers were relegated to transport roll, but six Junkers Ju-52s were also added. In the first few weeks, not much happened. Only one Heya was lost to Soviet fighters, but two more were mistakenly shot down by German planes. Serviceability decreased, 11 more Heya fighters were sent as replacements, one of these crashed on landing. The Caproni 135 bombers suffered from technical issues, cylinder heads inside the Piaggio engines were frequently thrown off, the propellers sometimes flew off on their own, separating from the aircraft, which made it more difficult to return to base. A similar German unit that flew Ju-88s could fly three times as many sorties as their Hungarian counterparts. By September, only three CA-135s were still active, five more were sent from Hungary, but one of them also had a technical defect. These bombers were then sent back to Hungary in late September, the crews were retrained on the Ju-87 Stuka and Ju-88 bombers, while the long-range reconnaissance group also started switching to the Ju-88. The two fighter squadrons then merged and converted to the BF-109 F4. It operated near Stalingrad in the next few weeks, while the old HE-46 short-range reconnaissance planes were sent back to Hungary, and another squadron of Heyas arrived from there in December. By the end of 1942, the second Air Force Brigade had one fighter and one reconnaissance group, each with two squadrons, while the two bomber squadrons were converting to new German types. When 2nd Army was defeated in January 1943, the Ilovskoye airfield was also attacked. One fighter and one reconnaissance squadron was stationed there at the time, these planes were burned, Air Force personnel defended the airfield and eventually broke out with the help of ground units. In March, its remnants were redesignated as the 102nd Air Force Brigade, now under the direct command of Luftflotte 4. It had one long-range reconnaissance squadron with Ju-88 planes, one short-range squadron with Focke-Wulf FW-189s, two fighter squadrons with BF-109G2s, one dive bomber squadron with Stukas, and one fast bomber squadron with Ju-88s. The units performed escort, fighter bomber, strafing and other missions, claiming 70 kills in 1943. Its bombers flew 2,500 missions. They also played an important role in the Kursk offensive, but attrition was also high, with many crews and planes lost during that year. Still, the unit continued serving, except for the dive bomber squadron, whose remnants returned to Hungary in October for rest and reorganization. Obviously, such small air units did not pose a significant threat to the Soviet Air Force, but their presence gave Hungarian crews a chance to gain experience during the war. Costs were high, replacing lost aircraft was a significant burden. Between 1940 and 1942, even though total personnel went from 9,000 to 21,000, the number of serviceable combat airplanes in the entire Air Force dropped from 326 to 228, the first number was reached again only in mid-1943. At the same time, the number of reconnaissance and bomber squadrons decreased, more emphasis was placed on fighter squadrons as required by wartime experiences. Domestic aircraft production increased. 
The improved Heia 2 with a new engine and an armored seat was introduced in late 1942. 200 would be manufactured in the next two years. Back in 1941, an agreement with Germany was signed regarding the production of BF-109 and ME-210 planes, but both programs suffered delays. I will talk about this and further developments in 1944 in the next episode. Thank you for watching, see you next time!